All right, everybody, welcome to my <clears throat> back room closet here where, you know, I do all the movie updates and stuff like that. Well, this is where it all goes. As you can see, all my movies and DVDs and crap Wii GameCube games and just all of my various posters and memorabilia is. Well, today I've kind of, this week I plan, well... You know, everyone's off work, and well, not everyone, but I currently am given all the various situations in the world, and uh, so I'm undergoing some cleaning here in my room, taking everything off shelves, cleaning them and everything, and today I figured I would do a little video going through my CD collection, which I keep in here on this, you know, three-tier shelf. Never really do as many. I'm a huge music fan. I've got no talent whatsoever with songwriting or instrument playing. Always been a big music fan. Especially of the 80s rock and 80s rock. That's kind of the three. And, you know, pop and stuff. Like, I've always been a poppier guy when it comes to music. So, since I've never really done a full fledged video on the CD collection, I figured, you know, this might be a cool opportunity. Ugh to do it. So the way I'm thinking of doing this, the top shelf I have kind of reserved for some certain things. This middle shelf is going to be all my 80s rock kind of stuff. And then the bottom is going to be the new... So the middle shelf is going to be stuff from the actual 80s. And then the bottom is going to be all new bands that were not around in the 80s and you know so on and so forth and I think I'm gonna have a separate little thing there as well but we'll get to that when we get there so start with the top shelf when I was a little kid I was always a huge fan of the who ever since the age of four or five I was always huge into the who so I've got a lot of who CDs and I also growing up huge fan of the 80s I have a million 80s compilation CDs so this top shelf I'm reserving for The Who, 80s compilations, and soundtracks. That's what I'm putting, you know, up top here. So, going through, I kind of have somewhat organization of these piles here. So we'll kind of cross each bridge as we get there. So, like some of these, like this tin of the 80s, you know, it's not even performed by the original artists. You know, same thing with this, you know, performed by the Countdown Singers. So I, I, and even with this one, Excellent 80s, which is performed by the originals, I may just store these in a different area, just because, you know, they're thicker and they take up more space, and not to mention this blue and red checkerboard on the back of this hurts the fuck out of my eyes to look at. So these first couple, I remember when Target used to sell a million of these things, they were in a series called... Mix Your Style Party Playlist, and Target just had a million of them. So going through these four, Mix Your Style from Target, I, we've got, you know, 80s Club, 80s Movie Hits, and I, I bought a huge plaque of these, uh, pack of these plastic CD protectors. I ran out of them, so a bunch of my CDs have them, a bunch don't. But yeah, 80s movie hits, you know, all kind of soundtrack songs. 80s alternative, so basically new wave and like post-punk kind of stuff. And then the most general one just called the 80s. So there we go. I remember they had a shit ton of those mixier style CDs. And then just other various ones. Uh, the big 80s VH1 music first. You know, I, I keep all these for sentimental value. These 20th Century Masters releases, which are everywhere. And then these, I remember I got these all at, like, Kmart back in the day. All, they had, like, these slip covers that went over them. We had Ultimate 80s. All number one hits of the 80s. Ultimate 80s Rock. 80s rock and roll, retro 80s, pretty sure the whole decade's retro, but just not sure what we're complaining about there. And then these, I've actually got the DVDs of these as well. These are the pure 80s sets. I don't have all of them. I only have three of them. I have the original blue one. 
I've got the orange Pure 80s number ones and the green Pure 80s hits. They, they made a bunch of those, though. All right. And then I believe the last two of these are going to be uh, Sounds of the 80s, 1982. <laughs> so, some interesting ones on there. And Monster 80s Volume 2. I never got Volume 1, so... <laughs> But no, this one's got some good stuff on there. So, as I said, a lot of overlap. But... Uh, best of this, best of sticks. You know what? I actually had this one. I had a couple of these up top too, just because they didn't fit anywhere. So I may put some of them back. So before I get to those, let's do the Who. Uh, first ever Who CD I bought. The Who, the Ultimate Collection, it's two CD set. Pretty much got all the hits you would want from The Who all on there. I've got, you know what, let me divide this up really quick. I've got two versions of Tommy. And I, I've got the, uh, the DVD of the movie over there as well. So we got Tommy, the album by The Who. And then I've also got this Deluxe Edition, which they did for a lot of these bands and stuff back in the day. Let's see. Right. And I'm putting sticks on top of that. Just keep it out of the way. So yeah, Tommy, it's pretty classic. Highly revered album by them. And a lot of these are just kind of meaty, beady, big, and bouncy. <laughs> the Who Sings My Generation, not to be confused with their first album, My Generation, because this one, I believe, is different. I don't know what the... <laughs> specs are magic bus and as i said growing up i was just a fanatic of the who so any who cd i didn't have i would buy the who then and now did you that's like a uh digipack cd uh endless wire an album they put out what year 2006 i've got their new album I think it's mixed in with one of the other piles here, too. But I also have the new one that they just put out last year. Let me see if I can find it in any of these piles. Do, 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 do. I know I'm wasting valuable time for the viewer here. Well, I do. I also have... Ooh. I'm doing this off the cuff, guys. I should have planned for this, but I didn't because <laughs> I'm a procrastinator. All right. You know what? We'll find the other one when we get to it. My number one favorite album by The Who, and one of my favorite albums ever. You know, Who's Next? It's got all the big commercial hits on there. The Who Live at Leeds. The Who Sell Out. I always liked that cover when I was a kid. Odds and Sods. I think this is a demo CD, the BBC Sessions. It's Hard. Who Are You? I lost the artwork for it when I was a kid, but there's Who Are You. So if anyone has the Who Are You artwork. And then I've got two versions of a quick one. I've got this version, which is the original. Just your standard album. And then I've got this, which I believe is like a Japanese version. The track listing's different, or... Yeah, the track listing's different. It's got different songs, so I'm not sure what the difference is with this one. But... All right. Let me just take one last gander around to see which pile I've got the other... The new, the new album they did is just called Who, which I think is a little bit <laughs> of a weird title for it, but hey, who am I to judge? It's the fucking who. They could do whatever they want. It's probably sitting right in front of me, too, and I'm just not seeing it. We'll get there. Alright. So then, uh, da -da -da -da. another thing I have up there are all the, the thin, like, either in, like, the sleeves or, like, super slim cases. So we'll get to those. Oh, See, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Still more Who. The Kids Are Alright soundtrack. I do also have the DVD. There's The Kids Are Alright. 
Quadrophenia. Never saw that movie, so I don't know anything about that one. So I'll tell you what, we'll put the new Who on top of that whenever we find it. And then the Lou, the Lou, the Who live at the Royal Albert Hall. There's that. All right. And then, you know what, we're going to put this up there with it. NBC, nothing but crotchety. This is a really bizarre... Oh, I gotta rest my back here, guys. This is a really bizarre collection of prank calls from this thing called the MJ Morning Show. Hi, this is Milton Fludge Cat. These things are funny. Most, if not all of this is on YouTube. You, you guys gotta look this up. This is funny stuff. All right, now what do you say? Let's do the soundtracks. So soundtracks, we have The Barn, which is a horror movie that just came out a couple years ago. I got this because Wild Rose has a song on there, and I'm a big fan of Wild Rose, so I figured I'd support the person who put Wild Rose on there. Uh, Cycle for the Beginning. This is a 47-track score by Graham Ravel. I, I know I'm probably saying that wrong. I always like that. Cool score. Inspired by the original movie. Stranger Things 3. I figured, you know, what? Just get it to help boost CD sales and stuff. Show people are still buying them. Uh, Night of the Comet. A reissue of the original CD. Not with the missing songs, which thankfully surfaced online. Uh, Basil Polidorus. Score for the movie Spellbinder. I really like the movie, and you know what? I really like the score, too. So I figured I'd pick that up. Better Off Dead. My my, my all-time favorite movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. You know, this is a... Uh, my mom got this for me when I was, like, six. Thank God she did, because this is out of print now and really, really expensive and rare and hard to get. So... I'm not going to go all into it, but I owe a lot in my life to this movie, Better Off Dead. And I'm already at the 12th minute mark, so I'm probably going to divide this up into parts. One of my favorite soundtracks ever, the Shocker soundtrack. Found this at Half Price Books. Nearly shit my pants when I found it. I was like, oh my god, they actually have the Shocker soundtrack. And uh, when I saw uh, Jean Beauvoir live at Melodic Rock Fest a couple years ago, he actually did this, the title song, Shocker, which was amazing. Uh, cocktail soundtrack, Tom Cruise. Great songs on there. I'm Gonna Get You, Sucka. One of my favorite comedies, one of the funniest movies. Got to get the soundtrack. Of course, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Even just to coincide with Bill and Ted Face the Music, which trailer just dropped a couple days ago. Tempest 2000, the soundtrack. It's like a really techno-y electronic soundtrack for this video game. Not sure if that's rare or hard to get now. Score for a French movie, Le Grand Pardon 2. I was going through a phase where I was really liking a lot of these French <laughs> kind of things. So that's just kind of a funny one. Best of the Best 2 soundtrack. I got this because of the Mark Free song. And there's some really 90s, like, dance, electronic, house music on there, too. That's a fun one. Best of the Best 2. Of course, the Simpsons movie soundtrack. Home Alone 3 soundtrack. I always li I always liked Home Alone 3 as a kid. Not as much as 1 or 2, but I always liked it. And I mainly got this for the awesome song My Town by Cartoon Boyfriend. But, you know, a lot of Home Again by Oingo Boingo, Let It Snow, a couple Chuck Berry songs, and even a suite of the score, which was cool. And Night Prowler, which is a song that sounds just like Wipeout. Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. Didn't even open this one yet. It was cheap, so I figured I'd get that. I'm like, hey, that's probably collectible or something. Robots. This one actually has some really solid early 2000s, mid 2000s music on there, including some compositions by the Blue Man Group. Walkie Talkie Man is a very fun song. Low Riders on here. Hey, you know. And I, I've always really liked Robots, too. It's a great movie, especially for kids and stuff. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. 
It's catchy. You know, some catchy. Not the, uh, Mr. Wonka. Mr. Wonka. Not that one. But, you know, some of the, the Veruca Salt song is great. The Mike TV song is a lot of fun. I really liked it growing up. <laughs> How can you not? Requiem for a Dream, right? One of the most intense movies and soundtracks ever. And then this, this Full Moon Features, which is like this two-disc collection of various songs. All right, and then these are just some more miscellaneous ones that were up there. I, I've got these three from when I was a kid. So I, would, I was going through a phase where I was obsessed with the song 500 Miles. <laughs> so I, I got this Best of the Proclaimers just so I could have a CD with 500 Miles on it. So there's that. I couldn't even tell you the last time I re-listened to it. Let's put that there. And then these are kids. This Thomas and Friends. There's too much sentimental value to just toss it, so I kept it. I still remember some of these songs, too, from when I was a kid, so hey. Like Down by the Docks, Night Train, and Boo Boo Choo Choo. <laughs> hey, what's the harm, right? I used to have a Bob the Builder CD, too, but I got rid of it. And then this one is actually kind of historic for this video I'm doing, because this is the first ever CD I owned. Mr. Alicarte. Uh, my kindergarten teacher actually had this and would play it a lot for us, but she would only ever play song three, Please Stand Up. We would always play song three, and we would have to, like, stand up and sit down and kind of go along with the song. And track four, Rock and Roll Body Parts, was kind of our reward. Like, she wouldn't play it often, but whenever she did, the whole kindergarten class would get really excited over it because it's more of a rock song. And I think, you know what, growing up loving that song and getting so excited over it is probably what helped contribute to a lot of the rock stuff you see in here. So, Mr. Alicarte. Uh, I, it's probably, I don't know if, I used to have, like, eight or nine, maybe even more Mr. Al CDs, but kind of tossed them, <laughs> so I'm not sure what happened to them. Elton John's Greatest Hits, Volume 2. I got this one because it's got Pinball Wizard. I love his version of Pinball Wizard. So that's a great listen. And this 20th Century Masters, again, of The Fix. I've got Reach the Beach on vinyl. All right, we're doing okay with space. Now let's go through all of the slim cases and, and all that jazz. And then we'll probably end this for part one just because I, I... We'll see if I keep going. You know, we'll, and now I'll probably divide this into two parts. Probably stop when I hit 30 minutes. Or at least when I finish this, and then we'll do part two. Maybe at part three. So yeah, let's keep going. I'm wasting time. Oh God! The 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. This this is a, a CD of a bunch of recordings of the songs from this musical. Twenty because six years ago, when I was a junior in high school, I was in this musical as a character called William Barfay, and I oh God, these fucking songs were drilled into my brain. Mainly the title song, you know, 25th annual. Putnam County Spelling Bee, and then I had my own solo song called Magic Foot, which if you can listen to me talk, you can imagine I don't have that much of a pitch range. <laughs> so that's what happens when they, and that's like the main character too, like I was in it more than, and so I'm like, fuck, you, you, you take the guy who really can't sing, and you gave me the lead part in this musical. So it's funny though, you know, good, good memories. Wholesome high school memories. And the, uh, the score for Psycho 2 by Jerry Goldsmith. A score and movie I actually really like. Let's see if that fit in here. Uh, da -da -da. Let's see if I could fit this. Perfect. Tuesday Night, her 1988 self-titled album. I got this from her at a convention. She signed it. I have another Tuesday Night album in this lot too, but it's one of the paper sleeves. Uh, Blue Man Group, this is just like a photo CD, so it's a bunch of photos of Blue Man Group. Uh, Find Me Three, Angels in Blue, this is just a burn
burned copy of the CD I got before the official CD was out. Um, this is just, yeah, these two are just kind of sampler CDs from a music website that I ordered stuff from. Okay, and then I've got three CDs here by Jill Colucci, uh, No Regrets, which is kind of a country folk album from 1990, I want to say. The reason I got all three of these from Jill for tracking down and posting her song Paradise here to my YouTube channel under the name Kaylee Adams. Uh, long story about that, but if you go on my YouTube channel, it's there. So she sent me these three CDs, so we got No Regrets. My Way Back Home, and then she signed this one, Heal My Heart. Very beautiful piano album, very moving, very emotional, very good one. Here's the other Tuesday Night album, the, the maxi single, and this is really rare. You can, This is very scarce and hard to get. It's a bunch of remixes and alternate versions of the song Nightmare as well as a bunch of other Tuesday night songs from the 80s. Got this from her directly at a convention last year. So, let's get that up here. I still might rearrange some of these later, but yeah, let me just start piling them up. A good friend of mine, Cassidy Paris, a good friend of mine, you know, we're always talking, so gotta support her. This is her four-song EP, Broken Hearted. She's from Australia. And just to prove it, my name is actually there in the special thanks. <laughs> Which is really cool. It's always cool whenever that happens. So, hey, there I am. I get my own. And what's funny is she also thanks Taylor Swift in the same line as me. So, <laughs> my my name is in a CD with Taylor Swift. <laughs> so, that that's pretty funny. Thank you so much, Cassidy, for that. Journey Eclipse. I like this one a lot more than most people. And the reason I'm keeping this separate from all the other Journey, as I said before, because these are the really slim digipack cases and stuff, and they've got their own section up here just because they're so small. But I always like this album. I know a lot of people don't like the heavier direction of it, but it still sounds like catchy Journey to me. Uh, Animotion, Rays, signed by them. Got that in the Dominican Republic, of all places. Heat 2, this just came, it's not their second album, but this one just came out earlier this year. Uh, really rocking, really in your face, even if it is, in my opinion, way overproduced. Seeing them live a couple years ago was fantastic, though. They're one of the most entertaining bands that you could see live. Heat, I've got another Heat album, too, in a jewel case. Underrated band, Cats in Space, Scarecrow. This came out in 2017. This is worth it alone for songs including The Mad Hatter's Tea Party and Clown in Your Nightmare and Broken Wing. And the, the covers they do are always awesome. That And I also have their third album, Day Trip to Narnia, which came after. Again, a really great follow-up. I think Scarecrow still gets my vote as the best one, but very, very close call. Great band. Very, very underrated. Straight to the Top, a three-song, you see it's paper thin, EP by the band Cry. Straight to the Top, Never Too Late, and a Robert Tepper cover of No Easy Way Out. They released their full album since then, but this is a nice, you know, early EP by them. Really love Cry. You'll hear more about them in a bit. Honeymoon Sweet, hands up. I did the crowdfunding for this, so I got this sign. CD of it, even though it's really not that great of an album, unfortunately. Nothing like their 80s output, unfortunately. Gowan, Return of the Strange Animal. One of, Strange Animal by Gowan is one of my favorite songs of all time. There's the original album, and this also comes with a DVD with like a documentary on the making of it. If you're a fan of Gowan or the song Strange Animal, this one is a must. Okay... This, I got this for free from my good man Paul Rudland. The Klepstein Pfeiffer... It, it looks like Pfeiffer, but it's Pfeiffer. Klepstein Pfeiffer Sampson. 
This is like a Midwestern rock kind of sampler EP with five songs on it. Yeah, this is a fun listen. Thank you, Paul Rutland, because, you know, his label, AOR Boulevard Records, put that out. Blue Man Group Las Vegas. This is a promo CD with a bunch of remixes of the, sh of the song Shake Your Euphemism. I, this is still sealed. I've got a couple Blue Man Group things here, because huge Blue Man Group fan. The Complex Sampler, which has three songs from the album The Complex, as well as a CD-ROM video on the making of the album. Same thing, CD single with the song The Current with Gavin Rosdale on vocals, which is an awesome kick-ass song. And then this, this Blue Man Group Las Vegas four-song sampler with one song from The Complex, one song from Audio, and then two songs that are exclusive to this CD, Drum Finale Throwdown and Let It Ride. So hey, that that's really cool. So I have a huge collection of Blue Man Group stuff, though that's not even scratching the surface of it. <laughs> this one's fun. Noran, Noran Rad. Deradox. This is a Brandon. I went to high school with him, he was in some of my classes, and one day he came in and just started handing his mixtape out to people, and that's what this is, which is funny. He was always a good guy, though, I got along with him great. So like some random Halloween horror sound CD, I got that at a Halloween store. Then I got this with DVD, this music from the 80s set that's got Lips Like Sugar, Chains of Love, Need You Tonight, and Take On Me. All right, guys, I think that takes care of that first shelf there. I'm going to cut it now, and we're going to go to part two, which I'm going to upload separate because I don't want a really long video out of this. So, hope you enjoyed that first part, ladies and gentlemen.